The human body is an amazing machine. And, like any machine, it needs fuel to run, and it also performs better if it's well maintained. Dancing is great for our machines. We know that. And there are plenty of scientific studies to prove it. So, where does the body get its energy? Why does our heart rate increase when we dance? Why do we breathe heavier? Why do we feel great after a good night of dancing? Let's find out what happens to our body when we dance. Almost all behaviors involving motor function start in the primary motor cortex, or M1, of the brain. M1's role is to tell the muscles to start moving by generating neural impulses. The second we start dancing, our muscles rely on a substance called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. Very simply put, ATP are energy molecules that the body creates after we eat, and it stores them in the muscle cells. We could think of them as little energy packets that the body uses as quick fuel, ready to be consumed right away when the muscles move. As we start dancing and continue to move, more ATP is needed to keep the muscles in motion. That means that all the ATP stored in the muscles gets depleted in a matter of seconds. However, the muscles have a second way to produce the energy they need to keep dancing. They begin pulling glycogen stored in their tissue and break it down into more ATP. Glycogen is a type of sugar that the body stores in the muscles and liver as fuel reserves. When we eat, we turn carbohydrates into glucose to feed our cells. Any leftover glucose we turn into glycogen, which serves as our fuel reserves. The process that extracts energy from glycogen is called glycolysis and it's a series of very quick chemical reactions that the body performs to continue providing the muscles with the energy they demand. It's a very efficient system for a while. Because if we continue to dance, after just a few minutes, all the glycogen reserves also get depleted. The body needs a third system that can provide long-term energy, otherwise we wouldn't be able to dance an entire song before running out of power. To do this, our muscles begin to pull glucose from the blood and turn that into more ATP through a process that it's rather complicated and we don't have time to explain here. However, we do need to mention that our body needs oxygen for this process. Therefore, the body begins to cut down the blood flow to non-essential body functions and gives priority to the muscles in order to provide all the oxygen and glucose they need. To keep up with new oxygen demand, our bodies begin to breathe heavier, and our hearts start beating faster in order to deliver oxygen and glucose to the muscles via the bloodstream. This breakdown of glucose and glycogen produces heat, which is why our body temperature rises when we dance. To prevent overheating, the body dilates the blood vessels, which are all the tubular structures that carry blood around the body. This takes all the blood away from the core and brings it closer to the skin, where it's cooler. The result? Our skin turns red and we begin to flush. At the same time, the body produces sweat to cool itself off. Sweat isn't triggered by heart rate or movement. It's triggered by receptors in the hypothalamus, an area of the brain that regulates body temperature and other functions. When the dance is over and we go back to our seats, the demand for energy decreases, bringing our breathing and heart rates back to normal until we're ready to dance another song. How long each person can last dancing depends on their endurance and their own efficiency to break down glucose into ATP for fuel. Along with all the exercise and physical benefits we get from dancing, our central nervous system produces endorphins which are hormones that reward our brain with feelings of happiness and pleasure that we get from our physical accomplishment, leaving us in a great mood. 
prove that dancing can help our bodies achieve the perfect balance of physical fitness and mental health.